pass me not, O oh, to say, Savior, yeah, my heart cry. Oh Lord, while all others thou art born, all in Jesus to not pass me by. Blessed Father, we are saying thank you for this wonderful evening. Thank you for showing us mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you that you've helped us all the way from January until now. Thank you for the many victories. Thank you for the answers to prayers. Thank you for the prayers that you have refused to answer. And thank you for the one that the answers are going to be tonight. Be thy exalted, almighty God. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. Lord, for as many mouths are willing to say thank you, Father, please let them receive their blessings this evening in Jesus' name. Father, you know that I'm just a messenger. I didn't pick myself to be here. But your word says in John 15 verse 16 that even we didn't pick ourselves, but you have chosen us so we can go out to bear fruits. But I ask this evening, just like my predecessor, the prophet Moses said, I don't want to go anywhere without your presence coming with me. And because I'm on your altar, Lord, for the ears that are hearing this evening that might be deaf, the power in your presence, let that hear be opened in Jesus' name. The eyes that is watching, Father, let those eyes see in Jesus' name. The minds that may be troubled right now or having emotional issues, Father, let them receive clarity and peace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we pray. Come on, let your amen work for you. Shout it better like you are receiving something. Firstly, I would like to appreciate our Father and our Mother in the Lord for this privilege. Um, Pastor Sid family is going to be 15 this year, August. So please, for every seed that is in this house, that is watching online or wherever you are, please, can you rise? Can you rise for every member of the Pastor Sid family? Please, can you stand up wherever you may be, wherever you are right now, embedded in the system, and let us just appreciate this mission for giving us the opportunity to serve to continue for the past 15 years plus. Help me celebrate our fathers and our mothers that have allowed us to do that which we do. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. We pray that this work will not die in our hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy and Mommy. Okay, please be seated, Seeds. Um, in a relay race, there's usually four people that run the race. Uh, my brothers have gone ahead, and they've done amazing work. Please help me celebrate them. It is only Jesus that can be the fifth person in the race. What I am is just the baton that they've been passing along from person to person. So this evening, understanding the God of wonders... <laughs> With a mini subtitle of the two-sided God. Understanding the God of wonders with a mini subtitle, the two-sided God. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. The Bible says, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore concentrate yourself before me 
and you shall be holy for I am holy. You shall be holy for I am holy. That is in the Old Testament. There's many of it in the Old Testament, but just in case you don't believe in holiness, in the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16, it says, because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. You shall be holy for I am holy. They have but well, they got 30 minutes, I have 15. So help me God. At the beginning of my research as an aerospace engineer, given the opportunity to study that degree, and moving towards the final year project, I had to ask my biological father, our father in the Lord, who is also my boss and my main mentor, how does one carry out a research? Yeah, if you're celebrating the man, please celebrate him. They don't make, they don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> you would never find an 81-year-old that is still going out on prayer walks till 4 a.m., 3 a.m., fasting, months in, months out because of other people. So if you're celebrating him, please celebrate him. So I asked, how do you do a research? And he said that the, the best, his reply was, the best way is to, to look at what your project supervisor has done, then try and go deeper than what he has done. Try and have an understanding more than what he has done before. So when you're talking about understanding God. I've also in my research found out that our Father and the Lord said God is like a two-sided God. On one side is the God of love. There is love like you find in 1 John chapter 4 verse 8. On one side it is love. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8. On another side is the consuming fire. It is the consuming fire. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24. Grab your neighbor, shake them a little bit and say, which side are you on? And ask them like you want to be sure, which side are you on? Point number three, if you are on God's love side, then you've gotten it made. If you are on the love side of God, you've gotten it made. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says, Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says that we are more than conqueror through him who loves us, who loves you. And then of course, if God is for you, then no one can be against you. As Romans 8 31 makes clear, Romans 8 31 makes clear that if God is for you, no one can be against you. Now, I love my wife. I love my wife very much. She's an amazing woman. And on one, yes, please help me celebrate her. I'm a difficult person to be married to and to even live with. Even me, I'm worried about myself sometimes. On one of our journeys, we were walking along a promenade and my wife was with our mother in the Lord. I was with our father in the Lord. There was a lot of space. There was also many people walking around. A gentleman came across and stepped on the back heel of my wife's foot breaking our slippers because of the love that I have. I lost my cool for two seconds. My hand was raised up. I was about to slap his destiny back in line so that he would know where he's supposed to walk. But our father in the Lord said, Licky, raising his voice, sharpishly and loudly, put down your hands. as is to say, put back your sword. This is not the garden of Gethsemane. Point number four, if you're on the other side of God, which is the consuming fire side, the consuming fire side, then you will have an issue because Hebrews 10, 31, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31 says, it is a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But the consuming fire side of God is actually not meant to destroy if you are holy. 
if you are not holy, then you would be in trouble. His word says to us in Malachi chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, Malachi chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, it says that it is there to purify the sons of Levi as silver and gold, so that their offering, Pastor Sid family, I hope you guys are listening, so that their offering, their life, their service, their time, their giving will be acceptable unto God. The purpose of the consuming side of God, the consuming fire side of God is for purification for those who are holy. So point number four, so it means that if you are not against holiness, if you are not finding it hard to keep the Ten Commandments, if you are not finding it difficult to remain pure, then the consuming fire side of God is to your advantage. I grew up on this camp. I've been here since I was six months old, so I was told. But while we were here, myself and my amazing brother of blessed memory, the original PD, Sons of Levi's, our mother would, would tell us to, Mommy Gio, would tell us to go and wash our clothes. We would soak it, and sometimes we would leave it there, we won't answer her, we'll keep dodging her, you know, as children would do. But then, on this particular time, after a whole week, a whole week, <laughs> Daddy Gio comes back from a ministerial visit, or one of those long ministerial visits. We ran immediately, we hear his vehicle, we ran to start washing these clothes that we should have washed seven days before. At this point, the unrighteousness in the clothes have already risen up to the top of the surface of the water, so it was just the clothes that was left. Now, my wonderful mother did not let the man of God rest, neither did she let him eat. She was briefing him on the happenings of what has happened while he was away. And on that briefing, our names came up. So we heard him walking through. This is the consuming fire now approaching us. We heard him coming towards us with every energy, the anointing and the annoyance. And when he came across to the back of the house where we were rushing to wash these clothes, he came out with a cutlass. Now... I have been beaten with a coat anger. I have been disciplined with a belt. But which one is a cutlass? There is two of us. So the thinking is, maybe this is some Abraham Isaac kind of situation. I was looking for the closest thing that I could find. Maybe a ram or a goat. But since there's two of us, maybe it would be a cow. But in this case, God did not answer in that direct way. I looked at my brother and I said, well, it's been good. Spending this short few years with you. But then our father and the Lord gave us the cutlass. Oh, this first. And he said, go and cut your own cane. I will give you three. He had wisdom, so he cut a very big stick. And he got his own three. I was given the same cutlass and I cut something that wasn't as strong. Long and short of it, I was beating 24 strokes that day. Because I didn't do it well. Tap somebody to your side and say, there's a word for you right now. Because you are on the side of God that loves you, receive grace to do that which God is telling you to do now. So that your suffering can end in Jesus' name. My time is running, so please stay with me. If you are on the love side of God, then you win. If you don't object to being holy and living a pure life, then you are on the consuming side of God, you also win. Because that fire does many things. It would help you burn the resistance that the enemy might put your way. We will get to that. This is how you get into a win-win situation with understanding the God of wonders. If you are on his love side and you are on his consuming fire side, then life for you is win-win. That would have been my conclusion. But as my mentor taught me and has told me to always keep looking for more and keep digging, I have seen that there is one more side. 
if my cameraman looks clearly at this coin that I have, there's one side there which is the love side of God, and there's another side which is the consuming side of God, the consuming fire side of God. But there's a side that is right there in the middle that is sitting in between the two. That is the third side. That third side is called the messy side. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. To 52. Forgive me if I borrow five minutes more. The Bible said Jesus and his disciples went into Jericho and came back out. That baffled me completely. It was one of our open heavens towards the end of last month. Jesus and his disciples went into Jericho and came back out. This is not the first time Jesus went into Jericho. So why did he go in this time? Apparently, the person that Jesus was looking for wasn't inside Jericho. Hence why he came back out. In fact, when he went in, he went in with his disciples. When he came out, he came out with the disciples and a multitude. So which means there were many people around. But there was a man called Bartimaeus. There was a blind man that was there. He was not loved by the people. In fact, the people were mean towards him. They were shutting him down while he was screaming. He was also not clean because just sheer dust from the crowd and the multitude following Jesus would have dirtied him anyway. But he used something, his voice. He used that to invoke the mercy side. And he used it to create a shout. I want you to jump up on your feet. We are almost there and my time is up. Your cry this evening is going to come into two spaces. That cry is a cry of mercy. It's a cry of mercy. Because mercy made Batmios the one that Jesus was looking for. It wasn't on the itinerary. It was his shout of mercy that allowed him to be the one that Jesus was looking for. You have gotten the love side. You have gotten the consuming fire side. This evening you need to get the other side, which is the mercy side. I have been in this camp, like I told you, since I was six months old. Even now, I have a full understanding. Easily, there's been 10 million miracles on the campground. There's been over 5 million deliverances on this camp. Over a million testimonies shared from here or connected to here. Your prayer is very simple. On this ground that you have been working on, every single time God touched somebody, his fingerprint was still left. So I don't know what it is that you are looking for this evening that you don't know how to ask or what to say or what to do. It is already on this ground. You just have to scream to God, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Go ahead and turn that into a prayer. Go ahead and turn it into a prayer. Your own miracle is here. You are the one that Jesus has been walking around looking for. Get his attention this evening. Get his attention this evening. Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. You have been moving up and down. It is me that you have been looking for. I am amongst the multitude here. There's millions more watching online. Millions of that will even see it later on. But Jesus, have mercy on me. I invoke your mercy side. I invoke your love side. I invoke your consuming fire. Jesus, have mercy on me. Come on, you have 30 seconds left. My time is definitely up. Make it count this evening. Use what you have. Use your voice. The enemy cannot hold you back anymore. You have made it to this program. You are watching it online. You are in house. You are in the old arena. Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on Oluwak Bemileke. Have mercy on me. Thank you, Father. And so shall it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My Father, my God, I commit your children into your hands. We have listened to your word, O oh God, and we are standing on this ground in which you have touched with your fingerprints all over the place. We are asking, Father, 
that from now on, let your love give anyone that is willing to shout aloud enough, amen, a sudden miracle in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Father, please, the grace to be on your consuming fireside so that that fire can burn all ropes that the enemy has been using to hold us back, all ropes tying our feet, all ropes tying our destiny. Father, please set that consuming fire on for us now in Jesus' name. And Lord, because of your mercy, for that person that would say amen, let them be the one that you are going to see tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Please, 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 just before you sit down, just find three people and show them. Don't even tell them. Just show them. I am stepping into my second half of sudden winds. I am stepping into my second half of sudden winds. Sudden winds. Sudden winds. Sudden winds. Win, win. Sudden winds in the mighty name of Jesus.